All right, so if you've been banging your head against the wall trying to figure out why your house still looks messy, even though you have put forth this, the tears, the sweat, the blood to clean that house, today's video is for you. It's the third video in a series that I've done, why my house still looks messy even though I've cleaned. So the first video I did was all about decorating mistakes. The second one was about things that no one ever cleans or needs to clean, you know, a little more often than we actually do. And then this third video right here is all about habits and organizational mistakes. So if this is your first time here, I'm Victoria Alexander and I help people dealing with mess, clutter and chaos get their homes under control once and for all. So if that sounds like something you need, I definitely invite you to like the video. If you do like it, dislike it. If you hate it, it all helps. So I don't care. And with that being said, though, do leave a comment if you have something that will either help me or help others that might be watching this video or dealing with a similar issue. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into these five mistakes. So number one is laundry everywhere. So obviously we know it's not cute, right? But it's just a part of life. Laundry is what it is. But the thing is, it shouldn't be out of control, okay? That's the 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 defining factor there, right? We all have laundry, so it's one thing to go into the living room to sit down, you bring all the clothes with you to fold and all this good stuff. But it's another thing when in every single room that you walk into in your house, there is laundry, right? And you can't tell the, the clean laundry from the dirty laundry. I mean, it is like all just one big mess. That is something you just do not want. So obviously, you're gonna to wanna to really bring that into one space, right? You need to get a laundry system down pat where you can fold in one area and you're actually putting away things or hanging up clothing. You know, there has to be a, you know, hey, we're washing, we're drying, we're hanging up, we're folding, we're putting it away. You gotta really streamline that whole process there and, you know, the frequency so that things are not just getting absolutely crazy. Now, if you are having a hard time, something else you can do is something I do. I have these huge nylon bags, right? Kind of like gym bags, I guess, or something. But they're absolutely huge. They were for one of my businesses or something like that. But I use them now literally just to put in all the laundry that I just don't have time for, okay? <laughs> like, that's just not my thing right now. Not in the mood. I have to fold maybe once a week or so. But so I'll wash every day. I'll dry every day. And then I'll throw those clothes into a um, into a bag or something until I can actually get around to folding them. So with that being said, yeah, is that you know 100% correct? There is no correct when it comes to this. That was a trick question. All right. Basically, though, you're not gonna come and there's laundry everywhere. It's all just neatly tucked and piled away into these gigantic bags. Everything looks neat. Nobody would ever know the difference, right? I feel good when I come home because I don't have stuff everywhere. So boom. More of the story, get you some bags to put all that stuff in, <laughs> get you a system so that you can regularly, you know, deal with the laundry to, like I said, get it washed, folded, hung up, put away, you know, done. Well, there's no such thing as being done with the laundry, right? It's an everyday thing. So, but managed, there we go. Mischief managed. Um, next mistake that I see when it comes to um, why your house still looks messy, even though you're cleaning all the time, are your purchasing habits, right? So number one, you're bringing in more than what's going out, right? But typically this would be impulse shopping or just not taking time to plan out purchases. So look in your pantry, right? You've got four boxes of Frosty Flakes. Why? You know, like, why? Um, magazines piling up, like, why do you have magazine subscriptions? Cancel those, all right? Um, I like a magazine, you know, every once in a while, but you could definitely just wait and buy the one that you want that's in the grocery store or whatever, as opposed to just having all of them sent to your house and now they're piling up and you don't, you know, it's hard to just take a magazine and toss it because obviously they put a lot of time and energy into making this and, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful and yada, yada, yada. But anyway, you know, it is still, there's no place for it in your home, especially not for you to have more magazines in your house than a, a doctor's office or something does, right? It's just like, what are we doing here? So stop the magazine subscriptions, cancel those, um, stop impulse shopping, Amazon one-click purchases. You know, I'm guilty. Yes, I had to really, you know, roll that in and, um, Definitely, like I said, planning food purchases and all that good stuff. If you have, you know, your counters in your kitchen, you know, there's so much food that you no longer have space to put it into the cabinets, right? That's a 
you know, like I said, you need to examine your purchasing habits, right? Like what's really going on here. And that is where you will begin to, you know, clear spaces. And finally, the house will start looking clean once you reel this this bad habit of yours in, okay? Same with decor. Decor can really become like a thing that piles up always buying pictures and art pieces and all this stuff and you have no place to put it right you bought it because you liked it but it's like and then what you know like it's just here (laughs) random and i'm saying that because i literally have two pictures to the right of me on the floor that i don't know why i got those like why why are they here right so yeah anyway uh why does my house still look messy even though i clean all the time uh number three would be you let things pile up before taking action, right? That's a habit, letting things pile up. So that's something you're going to want to stop doing. So um, a great example of that will be shoes by any entry and exit point in your home. Typically, at some point, if you do not stop and start putting things away, it's going to turn into shoe carnival, right? But not like a fun carnival. It's a carnival where everyone's starting to get mad because, you know, hey, number one, we can't get in. It's messy over here. It's starting to stink a little bit. It's kind of weird. Um, so, yeah, it's not a fun time. So that's something, you know, um, again, it begs for a system, right? Or it begs for regularity, for maintenance, for a daily action of, hey, we'll come home, yada, yada. And every night um, before, the, it's an easy one for the kids, too. You know, like, hey, take out the shoes, put them wherever they go. Um, and since we're specifically, even though the habit is about letting things pile up before taking action, right? Like how that can really just wreck you. Um, but I guess the other piece that I want to say is that making sure that you understand the things that need to be done daily, you know, versus every once in a while. And the thing is, if you can, if it piles up and it doesn't bother you, or it's not a huge inconvenience or or blocks entrances, cool. But if it's causing a problem, you know, you need a system. So whether that's, um, oh, and before I forget too, what I wanted to say was me personally, I keep all my shoes on the first floor. So previously, before I moved into this house, like I had a specific shoe closet, right? So not a regular closet, like I turned one of the rooms into a shoe closet, but it more so functioned like a mudroom. And so you just, it's, it's worked out in a weird way where as long as the shoes, all the shoes are kept in the mudroom, you know, it's just so much easier to maintain and clean up and, and keep things from going crazy. So that may be something you want to entertain if you have the, you may not have space for a mudroom, but you may be able to may be able to create a space that functions like a mudroom or a shoe closet where everybody's shoes glow, right? So it's not about taking shoes to bedrooms and all that kind of stuff. It's keeping shoes, you know, close to where you're putting them on and taking them off so that they can easily be put away or, you know, accessed when needed. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So why does my house still look messy? Even though I'm cleaning all the time. Mistake number four is no labels or signs, right? So I know we see like pictures of people's homes and all this and everything looks picture perfect. But um, yeah, in real life, no, sometimes we need signs to remind us of like, hey, plates really seriously, they just go right here in this cabinet, like not down there in the one by the stove, like up here, you know, to the right. That's where they go. (laughs) So um, definitely investing in some labels or signs, not just for you, right? If you're the person, the architect behind the whole, you know, system of where everything goes in the kitchen, well, you got it. But for someone else that didn't come up with it or whatever, it may be hard to see. Um, but people typically re- respect signs, right? They typically respect stop, you know, it says stop. Typically we do. Um, if the drawer says spoons, forks, knives, we typically, you know, won't put napkins in there and ketchup packets and all this other random stuff, right? We will just put the forks, knives, and spoons in there. So this really is going more so to you helping not just yourself, but the other people in your house know where to put things, right? Um, This helps to train people, to remind them. And no, you don't have to have signs up for forever, but let's say you just did some big organization project you may want to temporarily put big signs up like, boom, hey, plates are here or um, condiments here and cereal here and whatever it may be so that people get it and they can correct themselves. And then over time, you know, the habit will set in and you can take the signs down. Everyone's trained, live happily ever after, right? 
So um, same thing with like a drop zone. If you have an issue with people putting things everywhere, like, hey, so it's not just about labels or signs, right? It's also communication that also falls in this, making sure people know this is where you can just drop all your stuff off. And then I need you to come make sure this area is clean by 8 p.m. every night, right? Or I'm tossing whatever's on that area. And then you also let them know, hey, these are the no fly zones. So yes, we have the drop zone, but there should be nothing on any of these other surfaces, you know, any time of the day type thing. So yes, this mistake is, you know, the mistake number four is about a lack of signs and labels, but communication is really what it is. So let's go on to our fifth one, fifth mistake. Why does my house still look messy, even though I am cleaning like I'm supposed to? And that is you make it too hard <laughs> to keep the house clean. <laughs> so if you if someone has to like go through hoops to put something away, it's not going to happen, all right? Everything should be easy to do. <sighs> when I lived with my parents, um, there was a laundry basket in the laundry room and it had a lid on top, right? And so I would go on, I, I've always been a stickler for a cleaning space, right? But this really like just, I really had to question myself, rethink my whole existence. But there, like I said, there was a laundry hamper with a lid on and I would go in and um, I would see, you know, someone would have a bathroom mat on top of it and maybe my dad's shoes, you know, and I'm coming in to take like a, a towel that needs to be washed from the kitchen to put it into the hamper or whatever. And I'm looking, I'm just like disgusted. And I just tossed the towel though on top of what I just saw. Now, it was supposed to go into the hamper, but I just tossed it on top, right? That's where the other stuff is. After a while, I start getting like really, really irritated <laughs> by this hamper, right? Because every time I go in, um, even if there's nothing on top, I realize after a while, like I'm just tossing stuff on top of this hamper myself. And so it wasn't until like, I really, like I said, I had to do a deep dive because that's not me. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, am I having PTSD or something? But I um, went and I realized, okay, you know what? Let me take off this top, this lid, number one. And I threw it, you know, back behind the shoe rack or whatever. I didn't want to like throw it away because it's not mine. Like I said, it's my parents' house, but I didn't move it so that it's just out the way and, and not around. And sure enough, the problem was literally solved as an not only was I dropping stuff into the basket that needed to be washed, but the appropriate things that needed to go into the basket, like everyone's putting the stuff in the basket that needs to go in there and things are no longer piling up on top of the lid because nobody wants to take the lid off. So on the other hand, you may want to judge and be like, ooh, lazy people. Um, but I have since learned about organization styles and working with your personalities and whatnot. And typically just when it comes to all things in life, if Again, you have to jump through hoops to do it. It lessens the chance of you actually doing it. So when it comes to organization, same thing. If every time I go to, um, let's say I have a, um, ooh, yeah, the clear little um, totes or containers in the bathroom to put like cotton balls and your um, square little cotton pads and like Q-tips and all this stuff in it, right? For me personally, if I have to like pull it out of a drawer or if there's a lid to that container, I'm not using that, right? I will literally, like it will be there, but it's just decor. I'm going to open up my little linen closet and I'm going to reach down into my bag and get my cotton balls out because my mind literally just, I'm not doing that extra step of like pull out, pull out whatever I need. Or, you know, I'm not going to open the drawer, pull out whatever I need, and then push the drawer back in, right? That's two, that was three steps, right? That's too much when all I have to do is walk to the closet, stick my hand into the into the bowl and, and into the bag and just get my cotton ball out, right? I hope that makes sense. Essentially, lessen the barriers. If people have to jump through hoops to get things done, it's not going to get done. And if you see that you put different things in place around your house and they're still not being used, look at that. OK, so if people are dropping their clothes right here and you say, OK, you know, I'm going to get an extra hamper, but you put it upstairs in the laundry room, that doesn't help. You need to put that hamper where people are dropping the clothes, you know, downstairs by the main door or something. Um, so this one is just more so about responding to the situations that you see or the blocks that you see, what's making it hard to 
to get buy-in, whether it be from you, you know, or from other people. And like I said, it's personality. We all have different organization styles. You may want to check out uh, Cass's Clutterbug. I think Cass, Cass in the Clutterbug, something like that. But it will absolutely, you know, just blow your mind away over the different organization styles. And it's so easy to understand and, and create systems that work for the entire family regardless of what your organization style is. So that's a huge, huge, huge one as to why your house may still look messy is because, you know, you just don't have organization um, assets in place that work for everyone's personalities and or they're not strategically um, placed. You know, you're placing them where you think they look good as opposed to where they should be so that they actually work for you guys. So with that being said, here are those five. Again, why does my house still look messy? Even though I'm cleaning all the time, I'm like, oh my God. So <laughs> mistake number one, laundry everywhere. Like we said, bring it all together under one roof, one place, keep it bagged up, whatever you need to do. But you just don't want that all over the entire house. Um, number two, habits. Purchase decisions, all right? That's what's really setting you back. You need to really, you know, just, just dive deep into that. Cancel some subscriptions. Um, why does my house look messy even though I'm cleaning all the time? Habit number three is letting things pile up before taking action, right? We need daily systems and, and things in place so that we're able to keep things maintained and under control. We don't want to just react to situations. We want to, like I said, have a game plan, be proactive. Number four, communication or not having labels and signs. Again, you know, it's not just for you, it's also for the people in your home so that they can get used to the changes and where things need to go and just help keep people straight. People respect signs most of the time. And habit number five, why your house still looks messy, even though you're cleaning all the time, is it's too hard to keep the house clean because of the obstacles. Oh, and another one I want to add while I'm thinking about it is having cleaning supplies in the wrong place. So, for instance, um, let's say the bathrooms, right? Your bathroom cleaning products shouldn't be somewhere stored in the kitchen. They should be in the bathroom so that when someone gets that vibe or that burst to decide to go ahead and clean, everything they need is boom, 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 right here. I can knock it out, not think twice about it. Toilet brush. Toilet brush shouldn't be out in the in the garage or whatever somewhere. It needs to be right there by the toilet. All right. It's it's the same as you brushing your teeth. If you had to walk downstairs and and get a ladder to get into the top of the cabinet in the kitchen to get your toothbrush every day to brush your teeth, you're probably not going to do it. You keep it right there by the sink where you need it so that you can get it exactly when you need it. And it's easy to get, easy to put away. Boom, shakalaka, we're done. You guys get it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one.